Well, Thomas, <laughs> we're uh, we're back down with you. We're basically today we're just gathering up the the seven R three fifty. So Country Crest, as we know, was holding. I suppose the it was a very big deal. You spent a lot of time getting ready for the World Potato Congress. Is that the right way I worded that? Yeah, no, it was. Yeah, and it was, it was held here, uh, hosted in Ireland for well the first time since yeah, it's first time ever and. Last year, you guys trialled the 410 8RX. We come down, we've seen it, I come down, had a few loads beside the harvester with it. You were wanting, in the sense of a word that you say to me, get back to tracks within reason because you've nearly always historically had track machine of some description here. Yeah, we had always seen kind of between the John Deere 2 track or the Challenger 2 track that we had up until 2017, we always ran them and it's and, and it's for, for the ground. And especially in yeah. the spuds. The that spuds, road away, them sort of job, jobs. and So the 410 came, demonstration in from John Deere. Loved it, but it wasn't just quite right in your eyes. Hence. Just the one one aspect of it. Yes. And it's even before before the demo came across, I would have liked to see the 370 coming around in the 410 because of the gear yeah. box difference. But all they had was the 410. All it was available to 410, and don't get me wrong, totally appreciate getting the, we got this, get a right feel for it. We crammed an awful lot in. We sold most of our rape with it. We got it in the chase of when you were down for them a couple of days. Mm -hmm. We got a, a very good feel for it, but the gearbox wasn't for us. And you're coming away from the likes of your Fent and the John Deere or the Command Pro or the joystick and the Fent. It's very hard to go back to that E23. Yeah, so fast forward half a year or whatever it is now, World Potato Congress in conjunction with John Deere and Grimmy. 370 has arrived, the right gearbox is in now. You've done a little, very little if I'm right, but basically only for the work that was done during the Congress you got to use with it. That's all we've got to do with it, yeah. Is that Tot box tech? Totally different factor. Totally. Just through the gearbox? Through the gearbox, the whole feel for it, the command, like you know the command pro now yourself, mm -hmm. on your last track that you never really thought you mm -hmm. needed to mm -hmm. sit into your own 350 now, what do you think? I know I personally, but I know I personally be a command pro yeah. fan, but I know Gary, who's not total John Deere lover, would probably be every bit as happy in the old stuff. So it's not hitting everybody, but it certainly hits me and it hits you, but then we're all John Deere. John Deere, but also the- Happy hard heads. <laughs> also the work we're doing with it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? We're like for all, like, say we put the sprayer onto it, you have everything programmed into your joystick. Yeah. Like the likes of them things, just, just in general, I know you're not going to put a sprayer on either of these, but that functionality is some difference. What will a 370's main responsibilities be in the application of, of this business here? Like what would you, you know, you're delighted to be back at tracks, but why? What What's the reason for wanting back to tracks and for track, if that's the right way I'm pronouncing it, yeah. as opposed to a two track machine? Yeah, well, tracks just from air point of view for just for ground compaction and stuff like that like when you put a wheel tractor sitting beside it like them well, tracks we have <laughs> we have yeah and we we've been sewing with like with 900s there for the last while like yes you've great clearance but even when you park that beside the four track like the distance it's sitting on i know the tractor's a little bit heavier in general because it's beefed up for for the tracks but it's still a very lighter footprint. So it, sewn, primarily. So it likes to sew and we'll probably back to your grain cart probably. You know, because Do you, you see you that on a grain cart? I don't think you need it, but if you can keep the compaction then, why not? If well, we're no, sitting I, in the yard when we start cutting barley uh, and John Deere still have it left here, I put it on the grain cart. I think it'll never leave here, but that's just what I think to be honest with you. But we'll just keep <laughs> <laughs> But I remember the 410, and I'm I'm not I'm not running down the competitors brand that was on that chaser, mm. but because that, that that was some tractor on it, and guy fell in love the day he yeah. got to drive the big fin on it. But the 410 made it look easy. Yeah, no, it did. It's, it really, really did make yeah. it look easy, and it, it's clearance for over the straw. Everhorn was bang on. Yeah, no, it was very. Could, like we couldn't fall, we actually we'd, but that, we did but, like it. But green chasing would cause a lot of compaction in general, would it not? Yeah, well it does. You you've you've you have like we're running the there's um, 800 tires on the chaser bin, so you're trying to and that's you can't go any bigger than it. Like 
ideal scenario, to be honest, with that chase bin would be a set of tracks. Yeah, about like in the long those, run. Some of those, like the, yeah. those, is it the brand that you call them, Brent or the American? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You see them coming. Yeah. You showed us the, the they had the one when we were over with Frederick. The tracks, had yeah. The, had the tracks on it. You think that's the ideal way for a chase? I think that's bin? in the long term would be if that was an option here. Like if if, if Simon crossed turned around tomorrow and said we can put cr tracks on it, I would. Oh, it'd be okay. a no-brainer. Well, personally. So like chasing, sowing, that's the kind of work it's doing. Chasing, sowing, so which are sowing where you're trying to keep the ground pressure down, rotating with the potatoes, like you're trying to, you're trying to keep that soil from yeah. compacting it. You know, the likes of them jobs. And to be honest, you think it makes a difference, like because like John Deere published all this information. I remember writing it in our magazine that they claim that you know the two track, ah. Uh, and all can cause so much burning of the soil at the headlands, you know, as it's turning mm. and scrubbing. They've now designed this with a very great log and, and, and a percentage of it actually goes in below, the, 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 you know, to give it that. Do you think that makes as big a difference as they say? Because that, that's a big push from John Deere saying that it is one of the best machines to look after the soil. I think it is. Comparing your two track to that, we tried the Challenger years ago on the sower and it doesn't work because your headland, you have to come back in and work your headlands again every time, you know what I mean? Because you're, every time you turn, you're scuffing it. You've seen that, you've driven it. And there's no finesse with them on like a GPS. No. It's either... And when you have something working in the ground, yeah. on a two track, every time it wants to correct itself, it doesn't just turn the front and follows, it forces. But on a straight pull... You won't oh, beat it. I, it's, it's still yeah. untouchable. I'd actually love to get two identical machines, sub set of the same and put these against see each other. What, see what happens. So during the Potato Congress, we were here and did a bit of film and we spoke to Michael. There was a bit of a show put on, obviously, a planting that was a bit damp in the morning of the last day. So this old girl went out, R350, did a bit of a ripping at the start, and it was drying up. So what was the process that went through there to get the crops in the ground? What machines was, was, was happening and what tractors was pulling them? As you said, your tractor was doing a bit of ripping, so the morning was wet. We didn't get going probably till yeah. 11 o'clock or so, but it was a very funny instance there was a lot of a couple of hundred people up around the, the stands and stuff like that. All farmers, all potato growers were after spending months planting spuds and couldn't wait to get out of the fields and get finished with their planting. Vroom. First tractor started up and down the field and like that. Everybody was there. Everyone was down there. And it stayed busy down there for the whole day. Dead. We had... Then the NRX come in. The NRX followed in after that with the rotavator and ridger, basically rotivating and, and putting up the ridges follow through so she was basically sending out the straight line to the machines following it. We decided as part of the demonstration we offer both John Deere and Grimmy our own tractors because they're set up the gear was on them. We had our own 155 we stone with a new with a, a Grimmy CS 150 said so the 215 then was doing the planting she was running the, we changed to a four row planter this year you changed to a four row. Yeah. That was your. Was that your planter? Yes, that was our oh, planter. I was, yeah. See, I didn't even know that. I just looked at this big planter and went, "Whoa!" And it was Gareth was driving it. Gareth, yeah, Gareth was driving it. Yeah. And Gareth, from we met Gareth a few years ago driving one of the soft belt Grammy potato harvesters. That was his job. Yeah. So he was doing the planting, and you're planting now with a four row this year. That's a big bit of kit. It's a big bit of kit. It's daunting to look at and stuff, but the manoeuvrability of it is, you you wouldn't go back. I know, I watched, I seen, you know, Guy was out getting a few GoPros and that, out round it, and I was stood back sort of going, I wonder, where do you even start with that thing? I seen him looking around, wondering, but it's a big bit of kit, and then that's that job done. And that's, yeah, so it's in tier now. We'd normally run a couple of these stoners, but we had two of these stoners running out there in the day, but it's kind of condensing. So by putting the four-row planter in, you're, you're getting rid of two, two rows, and... It's a man less in the field for planting, it's machine less. Now, I know it's a bigger machine than that, but it's also, you have less variation. So if you have two planters that's applying pesticide and yes. putting out fert, you have a lot of different variations, unless, and you have one machine fully calibrated, the field is uniform. One of the bits of kit that stood out to me, and I think we actually interviewed the boss man, Behind it was the four row potato harvester. Is that a very strong 470? Yeah. So you've went from your two row or you up to the big planter. You've got the two two row har harvesters. And they'll stay that way. 
Oh, what, 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 you're all about this efficiency and all the rest of it. Yes. Think the big 4-0 wouldn't be the answer. But you have to remember, we can be digging potatoes and onions at the same time. Okay. We'll buy two then. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know an awful lot about potato harvesters, but like we were looking at that that day, that that's crazy. Some bit of kit, yeah. but but it's big. Could it's you, big. How do you transport that baby? It has to be permitted, I'm sure. No, on the road, just with an escort. Again, like it's actually, how would you say? It's not a lot wider than our own harvest two-row harvester. Because on air two row harvested, the engine and all your components that sit on the side and your wheel for balancing also sticks out to the side as well. Whereas the four row, everything is underneath. So it's all it's ah, all okay. tucked in. Okay. So I think air air two row machines run at 3.6 meters. And I think now I could be wrong, I think that four row machine is about 3.9. So it's not well still big. But anyway, well look Thomas, thanks very much. And uh, as I say. Well, it was a pleasure to sort of get involved. You know, it was a proud moment for us as a brand to be involved in an event like that, seeing our tractor uh, doing a wee bit. Anyway, yeah. Thomas, thank you. I think that's Gary's going to get this home now, and uh, then we're off to off to the show season. We're off Scotland. to the Highland show. So Lovely. Thank you.